At this point, we're always spending more money on storage, not because we want to, but because we need to. For creative work, you would always hear that a NAS or network attached storage is the best system to invest in as far as storage solutions go. But how exactly is a NAS better than just say a really big hard drive? Well, I've been using Synology's NAS systems for the past few years, and let me share with you my top six reasons on why you should be getting yourself a NAS. The NAS that's currently serving all my storage needs is the Synology DS1520 Plus. And the first reason I love this system so much is its scalability. That practically translates to this being a solution that will last you for the long run. Scalability here means you've got the ability to grow your NAS's capacity together with your storage needs as it increases over time. If you get a single hard drive, once it's full, it's full. With the NAS system, you can leave some of those storage base empty during your initial setup, then purchase and add more drives as you need them. This also makes it financially more feasible when you first invest in a NAS because you don't necessarily have to fund its maximum capacity from the get-go. When it does reach full capacity, you still have the ability to grow your NAS by using expansion units like the DX517 to add even more storage base to your system. If you need long-term expandability, a system like this is perfect. My DS1520 Plus, for example, has two eSATA expansion ports, meaning I could have up to two expansion units hooked up to this. The second reason why you might want to get a NAS is being able to access your ginormous collection of data from anywhere in the world. Because a network attached storage is, well, network attached, you'll be able to access all your files remotely over an internet connection. It's like having your own giant cloud drive. On Synology systems, you can log in remotely using something called Quick Connect. They've made it extremely seamless and easy to use, so you don't need a ton of complicated technical knowledge to be able to access your NAS. It's literally as simple as opening up a web browser, then logging in to your NAS. This is Disk Station Manager, the operating system your Synology NAS runs on. And from here, you can not only access your files, but it's also where you perform management tasks on your NAS. You've got total control over your NAS without even requiring physical access to it. And because remote access is possible, that means you can also host files on your NAS for your clients to download. It's basically having your own private file server. We use a package on the NAS called Synology Drive. And with that, you can generate password protected download links with the option to assign an expiry date for that link. It's a very professional way to deliver files to clients. The third reason you want a NAS is simply so that you can have all your data in one place, so it's easier to look up and fetch your files. It's got a big enough capacity, so it's one graceful consolidation of all your data. It's not only more convenient, but also much, much easier to organize. The way I was archiving my data before using a NAS was simply having terabytes of data scattered across a large number of individual external hard drives, and it was so difficult to find that one specific file from some time ago because you don't even remember which drive it was stored on. It was a painfully time-consuming process, so the luxury of having all your files in one place really does pay off in terms of time savings. It really is the best of both worlds. You've got the capacity of multiple hard drives combined, but in the convenience of a single unit. But putting all your eggs in one basket might sound like a stupidly dangerous thing to do, especially when you're talking about managing tens to hundreds of terabytes of data. And that's where my fourth reason comes in. Storing your data in a NAS is just about the safest way to do it because you have the option to set up multiple layers of redundancy to protect yourself from data loss. When you first set up your NAS, you have the option to configure your drives in a RAID or SHR array, meaning depending on which configuration you go for, you're trading a relatively small amount of capacity for drive failure tolerance. On my DS1520 Plus, for example, I've got SHR2 setup, which has a two drive failure tolerance. That means I can randomly have up to two drives in here fail completely, yet I still have 100% of my data intact. It is a pretty well-known fact that all hard drives will fail eventually, and it's only a matter of time, so it's good to be prepared for it. 
you can still add another layer of protection to your data using Synology's utility called Hyper Backup. You can use this to back up your NAS onto another cloud service or onto removable media. Now, if that's too much data to fit, you can schedule only specific folders to be backed up periodically, all automated using Hyper Backup. But the safest way to protect the data on your NAS is by creating what's called an off-site backup. That's having another NAS in a different location and having your main NAS constantly backing up to that off-site NAS. So if there was to say physical damage to one of your NAS units, like if it ever got caught in a flood or fire, your data will still be safe in that alternate location. You can set this all up using Hyper Backup as well. Now, my fifth reason to own a NAS is how it allows you to collaborate on files in a multi-user environment. Because you can have multiple people accessing a NAS simultaneously, either on-site or off-site, it makes it the perfect place to store files for a team of people who may need to access the same pool of files. This way, you don't have to spend time asking for files from your teammates, and it might also eliminate the need for team members to each keep an entire copy of something like a library. Plus, when you work on one file, it gets updated for everyone in the team. My final reason for getting a NAS is so you can use Synology Photos to free up space on your mobile devices. It works similar to commercially available cloud media storage services. You install the Synology Photos app on your phone, it backs your photos up onto your own NAS, then removes them from your phone to free up storage. Except with this, you don't have to pay a monthly subscription fee to keep your photos because you already fully own the storage that hosting your photos. You could even share this storage with your friends and family. It also has the intelligent photo analysis features that automatically groups your photos into categories for you. So for me, this is a great alternative to monthly paid services like Google Photos. And in case you do decide that a NAS is what you need in terms of a storage solution, the one I'm currently using is an easy one to recommend. This is the Synology DS1520 Plus. It's a fantastic mid-range NAS that I think is a great balance between cost and features. For my setup, I'm using five Synology HAT5300 drives, eight terabytes each, and two Synology SNV3400 SSDs in the cache base. These are Synology's own enterprise-grade drives, but if you're trying to cut down on cost, it's actually perfectly fine to run a NAS without the SSD cache. I do have a video where I go over this setup in more detail. It's already live, and I invite you to check that out if you're interested. But if not, maybe I'll see you in another video.